and 32 children died before they reached the age of 5. So how many casualties do we have technically? 5 in every 1,000 before they reached the age of 5. And normally the reasons are basic, napaka simple, no? Walang health services, malnutrition, etc., etc. Next slide, please. This is from the 2006 uh, FPS. An estimated 400, look at the number, an estimated, this is only an estimate with 473,400 women had induced abortion in 2000, translating to an abortion rate of 27 abortions per 1,000 women aged 14 to 44, and an abortion ratio of 18 abortions per 100 pregnancy. So you're looking at 100 pregnant women and um, 18 of them will probably go through abortions. And, and, and I think you understand the psychological ordeal of abortion. Uh, at one point in time, I was working in the NETA as a community development worker. And I, up to this point, I'm still, the, the, the story of this younger, young girl who went through abortion, Hanggang na yun, binabamungot pa ako or sa, sa kwento niya. Um, tatlong beses na siyang nagpa-abort, 18 years old lang siya. No? Uh, and, and to this time, kasi I was the one who brought her to the hospital. Hanggang na yun, yung death niya naka-instill pa sa mind ko. And, up, and with, because I also worked in Singapore, one, one, at one point in time, we visited the hospital. Um, and in that particular room, I saw these bottles of uh, fetuses all over the place. Imagine yourself in a room where the fetuses are there. Um, on my part alone, I was really horrified. I, I can't imagine how these women felt. Alright? And you're talking about 18 abortions per 100 pregnancies. Okay. Next. Majority of the women who go for an abortion are married. Yung 18 of the 100 are actually married or in a consensual union. In other words, these uh, women, ang tanong natin, bakit ba sila nag nagpapa-abort? They're married, they have a consensual relationship. Take note, you're talking about 91% of the 100 we're talking about go through one way or another abortion and they are married and they are in a consensual union. The mother of three or more children, you're talking about three children already or more for these 100 cases and 57% of them go through uh, again abortion. And poor, and poor, 68%. Uh, this is from the study of Juarez, Cabigon, and Singh in 2005. Uh, next slide please. Sorry. Uh, uh, this is one, uh, I, 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 I specifically wrote it down as one psychological effect sa mga kababahiyan ng abortion. Terminating a pregnancy is an anguished choice they make in the face of severe constraints. In other words, if you ask a woman, walang magsasabi sa iyo babae, gusto mong ipa-abort yung baby mo, nobody will ever say yes. But they are forced primarily because of the severe constraint that they live with. So you're talking about the realities of their lives. You have six children. Look back at Andy's family. Pag dumami pa ng dumami yung mga bata, you can imagine the harrowing ordeal that this family will go through, especially to the woman. So ang choice sa mga kababahiyan, kalimitan, magpa-abort na lang. And if you're going to go down sa ground then, you're talk you will be hearing these women telling you, Yung mga asawa nila, hindi rin naman mapigil sa, sa sexual activity. In fact, another study showed that quite a number of men don't actually want to use condom. So isa, isa pa yung impact na dapat i-handle natin. But the thing is, when you talk about abortion or terminating life, quite often it is handled by the woman herself. Okay. Next. Top three reasons for abortion disclosed by working women. Ito yung tatlong rason but may nagpapa-abort itong ating mga kababahiyan of the 100, of yung 18 of the 100. They could not afford the cost of raising another child. It's one major reason. That's number one actually. Their pregnancy occurred too soon after the last one. That's 57%. 
In other words, yung sequence ng panganganak. Um, according to, to medical practice, no, pag, pag direct yung panganganak mo, the probability of death is bigger. So, uh, doctors are saying, when you're giving birth, dapat may spacing so that your body can actually recover from uh, giving birth. Hindi ganun kadali magpanganak. I think some of the women can attest to that. It's not, it's not easy actually giving birth. Therefore, quite often, doctors are telling us, when you want to give birth, mag, mag uh, spacing. But uh, look at this, this women. They're forced to do pregnancy because the, the child come too soon after the previous one. And the third one, they have, they have enough children. In other words, this, this women who, who went to abortion would be saying, Ang dami ko ng anak, ayoko nang magkaroon pa. Okay, next. Women are having more children than they desire as seen in the gap between desired fertility. So what is happening here, uh, there was a, a study done by NSO, ORC, and MAPRO, and, and MDHS. Uh, these are institutional groups who go to and study. Ang sinasabi nila, yung mga kababaihan natin, uh, yung desire nila na children do not actually equal to the actual children that they have. Ibig sabihin, iba yung gusto nilang mag number ng children as compared to the children that they actually have. And the statistics are there. Uh, the desired children is only 2.5 while the actual fertility rate is 3.5. Next slide, please. Access to effective contraception would avert 30% of maternal deaths. 90% of abortion related to death and disabilities, and 20% of child deaths. This is from the UNFPA. In other words, considering the psycho psychosocial trauma that these women actually go through, yung panganganak, pagpapalaki ng bata, the spacing, na sila yung pinakamayroong effect, UNFPA is saying that if we are going to give these women Access to effective contraceptive, we're going to avert 30% of maternal deaths. 30% of maternal deaths. Ay pwedeng ma-avoid. And 90% of abortion. I'd like to stress that. 90% of abortion can be stopped if we give women especially an access to effective contraception. I did not talk of this data. This is from the United Nations Family Planning, the UNFP. Alright, next. Only 50.6% of married women use contraceptive, 14.8% of natural method and artificial method. This is the debate whether we want to use the natural method or the, the artificial method as they call it. Look at the data, 14.8% only use the natural method and artificial method 35.6%. I, I, I really hope that this statistic can be changed. But um, are we asking too much or if we move around, are there many people actually growing around to teach artificial and, uh, and natural method? Pag nag-umikot ka, halos wala din naman kang masyadong makikita no, sa ground. That's why that particular statistic is there. It glares us there and they are, they are facts. Um, Pag tinignan mo yung 30% na mababawa sa maternal death at 90% sa abortion related, you can see that the 50.6 of married women ay, ay logical. Okay, let's slide this. Uh, and here, here is another uh, study done by the Social Weather Station, the SWS. The overwhelmingly, majority of Filipinos, or 92%, believe that it is important to manage fertility and plan their family. And most 89 say that government should provide budget support for artificial method of family planning. And another majority, 55% of respondents, said that they are willing to pay for the family planning method of their choice. This is the statement of the majority of the people asked here. Um, all right, let them speak for themselves. In other words, what we're saying is, our family, yung mga pamilya natin sa baba, are actually ready for the family planning. Next. Uh, another uh, controversial item issue of the relationship between poverty and population. According to Alonso et al, and Pernier et al, poverty in the Philippines is exacerbated by rapid population growth. 
Um, so, from this data, it shows that the correlation na poverty at saka ng uh, uh, overpopulation. We've discussed this in, in my class, right? Yung Malthusian principle and the Pareto principle. And this is one statistics to define the relationship or the correlation between poverty and population growth. The proportion of school age members, 6 to 24 years old, who attend school declines from 67.9% for four member households to 65.6% .6 for nine or more member households. In other words, uh, the more members of the family, the less the probability of going to school. We know that this is one of the issues that the Millennium Development is trying to handle. Primarily because and dami pa rin mga bata natin na hindi nakakatuloy ng high school, lalo lalo na hindi makakatuloy ng college. Kaya you guys, I always just tell this to my class, you are one of the many, of the very few privileged children who actually reach college. Yung mga contemporary ninyo, uh, fellow Filipinos, na kasing edad ninyo, are not, uh, have no opportunity actually to go to school because they don't have the resources to go to school. Alright? So, yeah. The prevalence of child labor is associated also with household size. So what we're saying is, the bigger, so studies, mas malaki yung pamilya, mas malaki yung probabilidad na yung mga bata magtatrabaho as child labor. Sino sa inyo ang nagtrabaho na para kumita? Can you all raise your hand? I mean, for your own sustenance. Mukhang wala pa yata. Sino sa inyo ang nagtatrabaho para sa pag-aaral niyo ngayong college? Zero. One, two. I have one, two. So probably you don't understand what child labor means, no? It means that as a child you work instead of going to school. Ikaw yung nagtatrabaho para sa pagkain ninyo at sustainability niyo. You just have to go out of La Salle and look and, and check out all these children. Sila mismo yung nag-work for their own survival. And, and, and that is not something that is easy. You know that. So we're saying that working children families tend to be larger, 7 to 11 members, than those of non-working children. This is from Del Rosario and Bonga of a 2000 data research. Next. Therefore, given all these uh, uh, statistics about the psychological ordeal and the uh, less opportunity that, that these children and these women actually confront, I believe that as, as an academician, I believe that we should have a yes for the reproductive health bill. I did not only say yes, I say a critical yes for the reproductive health bill. What are the reasons why I am I'm making a position on a critical yes, number one? And let's put things in context, because uh, I know that there are many facets of the issue. I'm only tracking down the psychosocial. I cannot track down the, the moral issue. I think somebody will have to, to work that out. Putting things in context. All right. 